Well, uh, as Isro has said, everything has been checked multiple times. Regular checks are going on. Uh, the mission is going as planned. And uh, as Isro said, there's a lot of excitement uh, in the mission operation complex here in Bengaluru. Uh, remember, although this has been launched from Sri Harikota, it's uh, the Isro's uh, telemetry tracking and command center here in Bengaluru, which is almost a nerve center for this mission from where all commands will go out. A lot that happens today uh, from uh, a little over 5 to 6, 4 p.m. Uh, is something that's already programmed. Uh, uh, onboard uh, program will ensure that this soft landing happens, but uh, ISRO carrying out all last minute checks to ensure that this smooth landing, soft landing can happen as planned. And uh, by around, uh, just for around uh, 6, 4 p.m., uh, by then perhaps you will have the good news of uh, India successfully landing on surface of moon. At the same time, remember, there's a lot more that happens uh, once the soft landing happens. Yes, that's the big challenge for ISRO. But once that's done, uh, the kind of scientific experiments that ISRO plans to carry out on the surface of moon, the payloads that are part of the lander and as well as the rover will carry out multiple experiments on the surface of moon and the entire scientific community uh, looking forward to the kind of insights and details that would come out of uh, this particular scientific experiment that will be carried out on moon. Several experts that we have spoken to saying that uh, what comes out of that could have immense value for India's future space exploration programs, not just India but uh, several other space agencies across the world. Uh, what is the composition of uh, the surface of the moon? Are there uh, elements that would be beneficial for future scientific experiments or uh, perhaps at some point in time retrieving samples from the surface of moon and bringing back to Earth? That's something that might happen in the near future, in the next decade or so is what several experts are pointing out. And also uh, the larger goal of uh, looking at having a space station on the surface of the moon, which perhaps would become uh, almost a pit stop of sorts for exploring space f further from there. That's something that's on the minds of uh, scientists who would be keenly watching the kind of insights that would come uh, from the experiments being carried out, that will be carried out uh, by uh, the payloads that are currently on board, uh, both the rover and the lander. One of the payloads is on the propellant. Remember, uh, uh, that, is the, that is the module which is separated uh, from the lander module just a few days back. That will be going around the moon's orbit and it has a payload uh, that's known as SHAPE, S-H-A-P-E, and that looks at Earth from the moon's orbit. Uh, remember, we've always looked at moon from Earth. We've had remote sensing satellites as well. But uh, for the first time, you will have a payload or instrument that will study Earth, look at Earth from the surface of moon. Uh, that's something that's happening for the first time. That wasn't part of Chandrayaan-2. Uh, that is part of Chandrayaan-3. Uh, that is already in moon's orbit. Once the lander lands and the rover rolls out is when the other payloads uh, that are part of Chandrayaan-3 will start uh, experiments. Uh, there are multiple experiments being carried out. A uh, couple of them looking at uh, the kind of composition of the lunar uh, soil or lunar surface. What are the elements there? Uh, are there elements, uh, are there metals there? Are there uh, other chemical composition of the soil is something that will be studied. Uh, the seismic activity in the near vicinity of uh, uh, where this lander lands is another aspect that will be studied uh, by another payload uh, that's on the surface of moon. So these are essentially largely uh, some of the experiments that would be carried out a lot of focus on uh, the composition of the lunar surface is uh, what we can say, uh, whether it's through X-ray, whether it's through uh, spectrometer. These are some of the payloads that will be part of these uh, uh, experiments that will be carried out on the lunar surface. Uh, perhaps this would also lead to future experiments on the lunar surface whenever there's another lunar mission. For example, uh, 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 one of the scientists we were talking yesterday said uh, helium is something that's of great interest uh, to people on Earth, to scientists on Earth. And if indeed we do find helium there, then uh, there would be attempts by either ISRO or other space agencies to retrieve samples from the surface of the moon. That's another. If there are uh, uh, valuable, uh, perhaps metals or any other uh, elements there, then that would also be of interest. And perhaps these experiments that will be carried out today almost act like the first step in any such space exploration, first to get to know what exactly is part of the lunar surface and then perhaps 
future missions could look at bringing samples from the lunar surface back to Earth. That is something we do know uh, that was discussed briefly in uh, some of the plans that ISRO had. So obviously once uh, Chandrayaan-3 becomes successful, uh, there would be enough interest to look at that aspect as well. So these are largely experiments that would be carried out on the surface of Moon. Apart from these payloads, let's also tell some of the important uh, uh, equipments that are part of uh, this Chandrayaan-3 module. So how does uh, now Chandrayaan-3 decide where to land? Well, to assist the onboard systems, you have multiple cameras there. Uh, a camera with a velocity meter that will judge the velocity in comparison uh, to uh, the surface of moon. There is also a hazard detection and avoidance camera. What does it do? Well, it essentially tells the onboard systems uh, where there are boulders, where there are craters. Remember, it's not a smooth surface. Although ISRO has tentatively mapped out an area where it wants to land, but the precise location is something uh, that would be just based on the kind of inputs that will come in from the, uh, this camera that's on board. Uh, what really stands out here is the fact that uh, all these systems, whether we are uh, talking about LDV cameras, we are talking about hazard detection and avoidance camera, all these systems, equipments and programs are developed in-house by ISRO. So clearly it's not just uh, the, uh, the successful technological demonstration of a soft landing that ISRO is attempting today, but also a lot more technological capabilities uh, in terms of uh, hazard detection, LDVs, various other equipments that perhaps were not part of Chandrayaan-2, uh, but ISRO in the short span of time between Chandrayaan-2 and Chandrayaan-3 has developed all this. Well, if you look at Chandrayaan-2 and what went wrong, uh, two things that ISRO has uh, kind of zeroed in on. One, that uh, the velocity of Chandrayaan-2 lander module uh, couldn't be controlled, it couldn't be uh, brought to a desired velocity, uh, which means it was going at a much faster pace than what ISRO wanted it to. And uh, the onboard systems perhaps couldn't recalibrate for that kind of a velocity or the change in velocity. So what are the changes uh, or lessons learned which have been uh, inculcated uh, into this Chandrayaan-3 module? If you're look, looking at structural changes, one major change is that the legs of this lander has been strengthened. What it means is that even if the pace goes up slightly, perhaps if this lander lands at uh, 3 meters per second velocity also, it can withstand that pressure and land safely on the surface of the moon. That's one structural change. Apart from that, there are changes made in the onboard system to ensure that if any of these parameters, not just velocity, but any other parameter varies slightly than what is planned, the systems do not malfunction. The onboard programs and systems can recalibrate to that kind of a change in vital parameters and still uh, attempt a soft landing is what the onboard programming has been uh, designed. Now that's one another major change. Apart from that, we also have few other changes uh, that's not directly linked to the failure of Chandrayaan-2, but few other changes to in ensure that uh, the life of the lander and the rover can be extended. For example, now you have solar panels on all sides of this lander. What does it do? It essentially means that uh, the lander will get that much more energy, one, irrespective of uh, whether a certain side is exposed to the sunlight directly or not, irrespective of that, uh, the lander will be getting energy because it will have solar panels on all sides and it will ensure the life of uh, uh, the lander, the energy it gets is that much more, uh, that, that's in comparison with Chandrayaan-2. So these are some of the major structural and uh, changes in the onboard system uh, that we have seen when compared to Chandrayaan-3. Apart from that, there are a few other changes, uh, not changes but essentially a few other elements that have been added. For example, uh, there is uh, the emblem of ISRO, uh, the logo of ISRO that has been embossed on uh, the wheels of the rover Pragyan that will go down. Uh, ISRO also telling that there's also the Ashok Chakra uh, which has been embossed on the wheels of uh, the rover. What does it do? It essentially leaves an imprint on the surface of moon, uh, not of much scientific value, it's more of a pride. Uh, and as, uh, as one of the scientists that we spoke yesterday said, because of the kind of nature of uh, uh, the lunar surface, that imprint is likely to last for several decades. Uh, we have seen uh, some of the photos sent by uh, uh, 
the NASA's Mars rover that has left an imprint of the wheels and other things. But perhaps now you will see ISRO's logo, the Ashok Chakra on the surface of moon. That's something uh, that everyone is uh, looking for. And perhaps that's also a photo that ISRO would put out. Uh, remember, multiple cameras on the system, whether it's uh, on the lander or the rover, all of it uh, would be capturing. So these are some of the changes or uh, uh, new elements that have been added to Chandrayaan 2 when compared to Chandra Chandrayaan 3 when compared to Chandrayaan 2. Largely, uh, the final phase, the soft landing phase, is when uh, uh, there will be multiple mechanisms or maneuvers to bring down the speed of this uh, lander. Uh, there will be a power braking stage. Uh, what it essentially does is that from a higher speed, uh, ISRO will have to bring it down to say around anywhere around uh, 2 meters per second speed. Uh, that's the safe velocity for the lander to land. Apart from bring, bringing down the speed, the onboard systems will also ensure that they choose a specific location which they believe is suitable for a, a soft landing. It shouldn't have boulders, it shouldn't have craters. Uh, there is also uh, the inclination factor as well. Uh, the, it can't be too inclined because then the, there's a risk of the rover toppling when it steps out uh, of uh, the lander. So that's another aspect. Apart from that, uh, the location that will be chosen uh, is also something which essentially means that if at the last moment the lander wants to change the location, there should be an alternate location within perhaps say 100 meters uh, uh, radius from where it actually uh, zeroes in or uh, wants to land. So these are some of the parameters that will be decided. But one aspect that we'll have to say mention here is that uh, a lot of this would not be done manually. All of it will be done by the onboard programs that are there. Once the program uh, is uh, designed and locked in, uh, the last 15 to 20 minutes would all be done by the onboard systems. Very little uh, human intervention at that stage. Uh, that's what scientists at uh, ISRO are saying. So regular checks being done now to ensure that all of these programs are functioning properly, all of the parameters are being uh, collected properly, and perhaps one that, once that program is locked, and uh, it takes over the systems, uh, you won't have uh, too much of intervention that will happen from the telemetry tracking center here in Bengaluru. Uh, it's just uh, keeping fingers crossed for a soft landing then. Once the landing happens is when the interesting bits for the scientific community begins. Uh, there will be a lull period, a cooling period, where ISRO would wait for all the lunar dust to settle down uh, once the successful soft landing happens. Uh, that's the first step. Post which uh, you will see uh, one side panel of uh, this particular lander, uh, almost a ramp of sorts, coming out, and uh, that's when Pragyan, the rover, will start rolling out slowly. It might move at uh, anywhere around the speed of uh, one centimeter uh, per second. It will scan the area. Then the five uh, payloads that are there, uh, three on the lander and two payloads uh, that are uh, on uh, the rover will start the scientific experiment and uh, the next 14 days or so, if uh, uh, the landing happens today, then the next 14 days or so is the interesting, exciting times for the scientific community because these payloads will then start sending out uh, the kind of insights and details uh, those experiments will fetch.